What business has had the best return on capital for Berkshire? And what business of any on earth has had the best return on capital? And he adds, P.S., I would have come by rail, but there are no seats in the grain rail cars. <laughs> the, there's two ways of looking at it. If you talk about the capital necessary to run the business, as opposed to what we might have paid for the business. I mean, if we buy a wonderful business, you could run the Coca-Cola company, assuming you had the bottling system separate, you could run it with no capital. Now, if you buy it for $100 billion, I mean, you can look at that as your capital or you can look at the basic capital. We, when we look at what's a good business, we're defining it in terms of the capital actually needed in the business. Whether it's a good investment for us depends on how much we pay for that in the end. There are a number of businesses that operate on negative capital. Uh, Carol's with Fortune magazine. You know, any, any of the great magazines and, uh, operate with negative capital. I mean, they, the subscribers pay in advance. There are no fixed assets to speak of, and, and the receivables are not that much. The inventory is nothing. So. A magazine business, my guess is that People Magazine operates or Sports Illustrated, op, op, Sports Illustrated operate with negative capital, and particularly People makes a lot of money. Uh, so there are certain businesses. Well, we had a company called Blue Chip Stamps that, that where we got the float ahead of time and operated with really substantial negative capital. Uh, but there are a lot of great businesses uh, that need very, very little capital. Apple, Apple doesn't need that much capital. It, uh, you know, it, uh, uh, the best ones, of course, are the ones that get very large while needing no capital. Seas is a wonderful business, needs very little capital, but it, we can't get people eating 10 pounds of, of uh, box chocolates every day. Except uh, here. <laughs> we want to. <laughs> uh, Generally, the great consumer businesses need relatively little capital. Uh, uh, the, the businesses where people pay you in advance, you know, magazines of Christians being a case, insurance being a case, uh, you know, you're using, you're using your customer's capital. Uh, and we like those kind of businesses, but of course, so does the rest of the world, so they, they can become very competitive in, in buying them. We have a business, for example, that's run wonderfully uh, by Kathy, Kathy Baron Tamraz called Business Wire. Business Wire does not require a lot of capital. It has receivables and everything, but it is a service type business. And many of the service type businesses and consumer type businesses require a little capital. And when they get to be successful, you know, they can really be something. Uh, Charlie? Uh, I've got nothing to add, but, but at any rate, the, the formula never changes. If you, could own, if you could own one business in the world, what would it be, Charlie? I hope I already own it myself. <laughs> you, know, you and I got in trouble by addressing such a subject many decades That's ago. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I'll come back to it. Okay. <laughs> Number 13. You know, if, if you name some business that has incredible pricing power, you're talking about a business that's a monopoly or a near monopoly. Sure. And I don't think it's very smart for us to sit up here <laughs> naming as our most naming. admired businesses something that <laughs> Other people regard it as a monopoly. Okay, well, we'll move right along. 